Can you hear me? Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm back. I'm ready to continue. Good. Now that you've begun conditioning, let's return to 2070. After coalescence collapsed. You were trapped in Singapore. With quarantine zones unlocked all over the world, we couldn't raise WA Command. If we were going to escape, we had to improvise. We turned to the 54 Immortals. They were dangerous and unpredictable, but they were no enemy of ours. Hendrix trusted them? What choice did we have? If we wanted out of Singapore, we had to go through the biodomes. We had to go through the Immortals. Getting in was easy. Getting out would be another matter entirely. At the time, the biodomes were the safest place to be. With the outbreak of 2060, the immortals seized the marina and dug in. The biodomes were impenetrable. Dead proof. Hendricks had a contact, Danny Lee. He was slimy as I come, but he could get us transport. Not only that, Taylor had beaten us out of the biodomes. And Danny claimed to know where he was heading. They had this information. Danny was convinced Gojulan had info on her central server. They were doing us a solid, really. But that didn't come cheap. They wanted food, water, weapons, reinforcements from the Winslow Accord. We agreed to their terms with no idea if we could honor it. The Immortals were a people of their word and quite efficient in punishing those who did not act the same. Danny was in a bad mood. The Immortals weren't exactly happy to see us. They knew our part in what had happened in Coalescence. Danny went so far as to accuse us of opening the containment zones ourselves. Hendrix persuaded him otherwise. But that didn't change how I felt. We were there. We had our chance to stop Diaz in the server room. You cannot blame yourself for what is out of your control. There were powers in play far greater than your own. Powers with far more control. You were a pawn in his game. You mean Deimos. Well, as it turns out, we weren't his only pawns in the room. How do you mean? You can get us a ride out? Sure, I'll give you that. But claiming to know where Taylor was? Know that saying, too good to be true? Something was wrong. There was something malevolent, malicious. I called Danny out. I wasn't too happy with that. But then again, we assumed he was just scared. The outbreak now occurring worldwide was unprecedented. We were all scared. Up till now, we'd become complacent. We got comfortable. The dead had stayed in their cage, and we kept pretending nothing had happened. Taylor and Diaz changed that. Pandemonium, riots, civil war, countries were already tearing themselves apart, in many cases before the dead even reached them. But Danny wasn't scared. He was stalling. And it only took us another moment to find out why. The Go siblings. Danny set you up. No, no, no. This was different. It was their eyes. Hollow. Empty. Void of life. Like they could see right through me. They all had it. Just like Diaz. It was only later we found out all higher-ups in the Immortals were outfitted with DNI. Like us. If only we'd known the part our own technology would play. The thing about dead killers, though. There's always a plan B. We had a robot squad in place, ready if the situation took a turn. Gojulan bolted before our robots got her. She was headed for the server room in Cloud Mountain, the only place we could put in the call from transport. It became quickly apparent that uninvited guests had joined the party in the biodomes. The dead were flooding into this safe haven. It was about to become hell on Earth. We had to move. We had to get to Cloud Mountain.
how the undead got in. A forgotten open gate. A child's mistake. A poorly nailed board over a window. It didn't matter. It was spreading fast. We were already outnumbered 20 to 1. The remaining humans scrambling away or locked in their homes. heard that familiar screech. Parasites, mutated creatures born out of 6115 were flying towards us. Shipping yard cleared. Cloud Mountain was just ahead. The server room at the top. We had a long climb ahead of us.
happened in the server room. By the time we got there, Gojulan encrypted her hardware, locking us out of the central server. Hendrix stepped in, but we were a few seconds too late. Damage was done. Why did she lock you out? It didn't make any sense. Sure, we weren't on the best of terms, but this wasn't her. Something else made her do it. Something was controlling her. <sighs> the encryption used a biometric hand scan. Hendrix tried to unlock it. But the Go siblings were smart. They'd set up an access system requiring both of their hands for authorization. And her brother was shredded with bullets back in the bar. We could hear the horde coming. And we only had one sibling. But she did have two hands. You chose to cut off her hand. Why? I hoped the biometrics were interchangeable, allowing the siblings to use either reader. We were calling transport and getting out alive. It had to work. Lucky for us, it did. Hendrix interfaced with the system. He was able to raise WA command. We needed a ride out ASAP. They had a VTOL a few minutes out. Rendezvous was set for the top of the dome. But Hendrix wanted to know what Gojulan had on Taylor. Anything, even the smallest detail, could be helpful in picking up his trail. And that would take some time. And time was something we didn't have. Hendrix searched the archives. I dealt with the incoming horde. Hendrix had pulled all the data he could. I hoped it was enough. Our pickup was in position. It's time to get the hell out of here. Our bird wasn't alone in the sky. Our veto had caught the attention of an old automated raid. We needed to find another way. This wraith telling you. It was like the malfunctioning robot you found in different quarantine zones. The kind targeting anything and everything is an enemy. Just like that. Except on a much larger, more deadly scale. And this one was very interested in us. Command had an exit route. Extraction set beyond the swamps. 
If we crossed the super trees, there were shipping docks where we could commandeer an airboat. <laughs> it's easier said than done. Between the flesh eaters and that wraith eyeing us, the super trees would be no walk in the park. We had to haul ass and stay out of sight. But they weren't our only concern. Winslow Accord picked up chatter ahead. Apparently, we weren't the only humans using the docks to escape. The super tree was collapsing. The only safe route to the docks was up. Chatter confirmed that 54 immortals were scrambling to get out of the biodomes through the swamps. The sound of it, they wanted us dead as much as the flesh eaters did. Looked like we were jumping from one bad situation into another. Hendrix commandeered an airboat and set the autopilot. We had undead on our ass, and more 54i ahead. And that rogue wraith wasn't done with us yet.
the virus. 6115 wouldn't stop this time. The Winslow Accord and CDP had been thrown into chaos. We'd lost Hong Kong, Berlin, and Cairo. And it was just getting started. What would come next? How the world would change? There was no way to be ready for that. Five years. Five long, dark years. Opening the quarantine zones did exactly as we feared. And by 2075, 